Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about Gemon effect. What is this Gemon effect and what is its role in spectroscopy? Let us take an example of atom beryllium. It is having the atomic number 4, so electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2. How the electrons are filled? Electrons are filled such that two electrons are there in the 1s orbital and other two electrons are present in the 2s orbital. Still the second orbit is having the another orbital that is the 2p orbital. In case of beryllium, what happens when we are supplying the energy? The energy can be supplied in presence of magnetic field or in absence of magnetic field. First of all, let us see what happens when there is no magnetic field. Under the absence of magnetic field, when we apply the energy, the electrons undergo transition. They can produce an electronic transition from the 2s orbital to the 3p orbital. Now this transition requires energy which is equal to the energy gap between the 2s and 3p orbitals. So under the absence of magnetic field, we can observe a single transition from 2s orbital to the 3p orbital. Now let us see what happens in presence of magnetic field. Under the applied magnetic field, when we supply the energy to the beryllium, what happens? Under the applied magnetic field, the 3p orbital is present in the third orbit and electrons can jump from the 2s orbital to the 3p orbital. So here 2s orbital is like this, but in case of 3p orbital, we can observe the three spectral lines. According to the three energy states, three types of transitions are possible in the beryllium under the applied magnetic field. So here we can observe the splitting of the spectral lines under the applied magnetic field which is called as Gemon effect. How it happens? So in order to understand this let us discuss about the two types of quantum numbers. Suppose we consider 2s orbital. Here the 2 indicates the principal quantum number which indicates the number of orbit. So 2s orbital means the electrons are present on the second orbit. And what is s indicates? Here s indicates the s orbital which can be indicated by angular momentum quantum number L. So each orbital will have a different L value based on that we can easily identify where the electron is present. So suppose if L is equal to 0 then it is designated as s orbital. If L is equal to 1 it is designated as p orbital and L is equal to 2 then d orbital and L is equal to 3 then f orbital. In this way by angular momentum quantum number L, we can identify the type of orbital. Now let us see another quantum number, magnetic momentum number M. This magnetic momentum number M indicates the number of electronic states under the magnetic field applied. So here the M value depends on the type of orbital which is linked with the angular momentum number. So M is equal to 2L plus 1 where L is the angular momentum quantum number. So under the applied magnetic field, the spectral lines are going to be splitted and the number of splittings can be given by magnetic moment number. For example, in case of 2s orbital, the L value is equal to 0 because L is equal to 0 indicates s orbital. Then what will be the M value? So when the L is equal to 0, M is equal to 2 into 0 plus 1, so which is nothing but 1. So for 2s orbital, the magnetic moment number is 1 that means it exists in a single state. But in case of 3p orbital what happens? For p orbital the L value is equal to 1. So based on that m value will be 2 into 1 plus 1 which is nothing but 3. So in case of 3p orbital the number of uh, electronic states will be 3 under the applied magnetic field. So this splitting of electronic states is called as Gemon effect. So when there is no magnetic field, we can observe only one orbital that is 2s orbital and another one is a 3p orbital. So electrons can jump from 2s to 3p orbital. But when we are going to apply the magnetic field under the applied magnetic field, 2s orbitals cannot split because they will have only one electronic state as m value is equal to 1. But in case of 3p orbital, m value is equal to 3. That means they can exist as three electronic states. Now the electrons can jump from 2s orbital to the 3p orbital in three ways. In this way, the splitting of the electronic states under the applied magnetic field is known as Gemon effect. 
this effect is observed under applied magnetic field only. For example, when there is no magnetic field, what is the state of 3p orbital? The p orbitals can be of three types so that the 3p orbital will have the three types of orbitals. Now they can be denoted as 3px, 3py and 3pj. So when there is no magnetic field, still the electrons can be filled into the three types of 3p orbitals, 3px, 3py and 3pj. But interestingly, these p orbitals are degenerated orbitals. That means they are having the same energy. So within the spectra, they will show a same electronic state. That's why you can observe a single line in case of 3p orbital under no applied magnetic field. But when we are going to apply the magnetic field, then the 3p orbital can be split into the three orbitals. Again, they are 3px, 3py, 3pz, but they are having a different energy so that we can observe the three energy states of 3p orbitals. And these three electronic states can be indicated as m plus 1, m0, m minus 1. So here m indicates the magnetic momentum number, which gives the total number of electronic states that can be observed under the applied magnetic field. So this phenomena what we call Zeeman effect. Now let us the Zeeman effect in the nuclear magnetic resonance. Suppose there is no magnetic field applied, then what is the spin states of the nuclei? In the absence of magnetic field, the spin of the nuclei will be randomly oriented such that they will have only one spin state. So all the nuclei are acting like degenerated nuclei with the similar energy. But when we apply the magnetic field, we can observe the Zeeman splitting and we can observe the two types of spin states and even the nuclei can jump from one spin state to the other spin state resulting in the absorption and signal in the NMR spectroscopy. One of the spin state is the plus half where the nuclei are aligned parallelly to the applied magnetic field and another spin state is the minus half where the nuclei are aligned oppositely to the applied magnetic field. So this is a situation of a nuclei with spin quantum number i is equal to half under the applied magnetic field, it will have the two spin states, plus half and minus half. So when we are applying the magnetic field, the nuclei will have the two spin states. One is like this and another one is like this. So first one is having the spin state aligned parallelly to the applied magnetic field. So this is called as aligned orientation with I is equal to plus half. And second one is the opposite orientation where the spin of the nuclei is opposite to the applied magnetic field and I is equal to minus half. So normally nuclei will be in the aligned orientation, but when we supply the energy, the nuclei can jump from aligned orientation to the opposite orientation by absorption of the energy, which is observed as a signal in the NMR spectroscopy. In this way, Zeeman effect plays an important role in NMR spectroscopy. Now let us see the Zeeman effect in atomic spectroscopy. In the atomic absorption spectroscopy, we are going to use the source like the hollow cathode lamps. Now the spectral line from this hollow cathode lamp is passed through the sample which is placed in the graphite furnace and then it reaches to the monochromator and finally it reaches to the detector. Generally photodiode array or photomultiplier tube can be used as detectors within the atomic spectroscopy. So this is the process of measurement of signal in the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Then we can observe the signal as the absorbance versus wavelength and we can observe a peak at a particular wavelength. But apart from this peak, we can also observe a small signal at the particular wavelength range and this absorption is because of the background absorption. The background is nothing but the solvent and other matrix material present along with the sample. So what are the absorption of the spectral line by the components other than the analyte is known as background absorption. So this background absorption produces an error in the detection which should be eliminated. So this background noise can be eliminated by using the Zeeman effect. So here we can apply a Zeeman correction and two modifications are done. First we are going to apply the magnetic field externally and then we are going to place a polarizer like this. This polarizer is going to be oriented perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. In such situation, we can observe the signal both of the sample as well as the background noise. Now we are going to rotate the polarizer to the 90 degrees. Then polarizer is oriented parallelly to the applied magnetic field. In such situation, we can observe the signal because of the background noise only. 
In this way, in the first one, we have observed the signal of both sample as well as background. In the second one, we have observed the signal only because of the background. When we subtract the first signal from the second signal, we will get the real absorption by the sample. So by detecting this, we will get the background correction and absorption like this. In this way, when we apply the magnetic field, the spectral lines are going to be splitted. When the polarizer is oriented perpendicular to the applied magnetic field, both background as well as sample will absorb. But when it is oriented parallelly to the applied magnetic field, only background is going to absorb. So when we detect these two values, we will get the real absorption by the atoms in the sample. In this way, Gman effect can be applied for the background correction in the atomic spectroscopy. So that's about the Gman effect. Gman effect is the splitting of the spectral lines under applied magnetic field, which is useful in the NMR spectroscopy, atomic spectroscopy, and even it is useful in the electron spin resonance. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.